Hi everyone, um, welcome to Asamu Rats and this video is on, uh, it's a breeding series one and it's all about setting up a birthing cage so this is how I do it. Um, I think the first thing that needs to be said about birthing cages is size matters <laughs> but to a degree. So the th thing you want with a birthing cage is you want to give the mum a safe secure space where she can build a nest, where she can have the babies, where they can be safe for at least a few weeks of their life and she still has enough room to move, to stretch, to stand. Um, how much space does vary a little bit. Now, some people will have birthing cages that are a lot smaller than what I've got. You can see the base here in my Alaska. We'll have the full page up soon. Maybe like half the size. Um, some will use what, we, what are called um, lab tanks. I'll try and put a picture up of one. Um, I will say they're great if you've got chewers particularly. <laughs> Apparently they just can't get through the plastic on them. Whereas people can, people, rats can chew out of Alaska's if they put their mind to it. Though I never had it yet. <laughs> um, so let's hope for the best on that one. If you do get a lab cage though, make sure you want get one with the extra height. Um, because a lot of them are very low and a rat couldn't stand up on its hind legs. And you want to be, let it to be able to be a rat as well as be a mother. Um, the space you give, if you give a larger rat space like I have, the rats have more room to be away from the nest. Now this is a personal choice thing, some, some breeders prefer to minimise the space so the mums have to spend more time on the nest. I like my mums to be able to have a little bit of time for themselves as well and to be honest they're very good mums normally so they don't need the compressed space, they will spend as much time on the babies as the babies need and then they will go off for a bit of a break, particularly in summer when it's really warm. Um, some mums will spend all their time on the babies, some mums will have the odd break elsewhere, particularly when the babies start getting a little bit um, nutty, <laughs> uh, when they get to that like, two, three week old st um, stage it works quite well. The other thing I like about an Alaska sized cage is um, when it gets to about two, two and a half weeks then I can set it up so that the babies have more space and have things to do. So I'll kind of put things in and you'll see that when I get to that age, hopefully, assuming Mog does give, give me babies, um, everything crossed at the moment, but it's getting close, hence the cage set up time. So we've got the kind of cage size set up. Um, I would say generally speaking you either want, you want very fine bar spacing as well, so you don't want anything with anything over. Um, a centimetre in bar spacing because the babies can get pushed out etc. You can get some with like a square mesh critter style cages. They're not ideal as much as they're um, kind of all metal which is great if you do have chewing mums and can be useful in an emergency. Um, the square mesh is kind of big enough that a very small baby could accidentally get pushed out or crawl out. Um, normally if you've got a deepish tray it's not a big problem because by the time they're able to climb out themselves um, it's kind of like you've moved them to a different cage anyway. But yes, small bar spacing is a must. Access is useful. So what I quite like about the Alaska is it has two doors that I can use. It's got a biggish one in, um, on the side and then it's got quite a, a decent sized one at the top as well. Um, you can get some that only have opening tops. Um, I don't love that because if you're going to get mum out for any reason, um, you come at her from above and she's in defensive mode to a degree anyway because she has to protect the baby. So I like to have a front door if I can. Um, but really it does depend on the rats. And to be honest, most of mine, if I open the door, they're out there anyway wanting to see me. So um, it's one to bear in mind when you're choosing birthing cages. So we've got uh, chosen our birthing cage. I'm now going to talk a little bit about what I use to set mine up. And bear in mind, again, this is what I do. I'll try and mention a bit what other people do as well. So my main substrate of choice is cardboard. Um, I like to use two different types of cards. So we've got card squares here and we've got um, card strips, but quite coarse stuff. I like the stuff that kind of is quite springy. Um, what I also use, and this is a top tip, <laughs> um, I use a little bit of Back to Nature. So this is a paper cat litter. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it before, you can get it in most shops over here. Um, there are equivalents all the way around the world. You can also get um, different brands. Paperless is another brand that I know that I've used in the past. Um, I just get this one at rat shows, so I kind of use it quite a lot. Um, what I would say, sort of decent litter like this that is rat safe, put a handful in each corner. Now, cages do get smelly, um, birthing cages particularly. Um, whilst there's not many rats in there, um, mum produces still a fair bit of waste and then once the kittens get a bit older they start stinking as well um, and because mum is kind of birthing she will eat the placentas off the kittens and any dead kittens she, and you'll often feed her a little bit of extra protein anyway her poos smell more than normal so by doing this we're, we're taking the heavy kind of soiled areas and we're just putting a little bit of um, litter in there 
so that just really helps with the smell. In theory, you could put a thin layer all over the bottom, but to be honest, my mum's shovel things around that much. I could only really have any faith that the stuff in the corners is probably going to stay there. I can almost guarantee that I'm not always right, that my mum, my mum's nest will be in this corner or this corner. They very rarely go over there. Occasionally I'll get one in the middle. Um, it does vary a little bit by rat, but most of the time it's kind of this corner because that's the most safe secluded area. Right, so we've got that in, I'm going to put my main substrate in. So the reason I use card as my substrate for my birthing cages and I don't use it in my main cages is partly because um, I particularly like card here because it has no phenols whatsoever and whilst um, the shavings that I use have been heavily extracted um, for me it's just kind of it's not really worth the risk of even a very low amount of phenols because the babies will literally be in it. Um, plus, to be honest, I find card really good for them to nest in, particularly this springy stuff. Um, it builds very good nests, it holds its structure very well, um, and it just seems to work very well for mums. It's not as absorbent, which is probably partly why it smells a bit more. Um, but it's, it's, it just works really well for kind of building the kind of typical nests that rats do. So, um, I don't put too deep a layer in this, I've given them a decent amount because what will inevitably happen is all this will end up in a pile here once the babies are born um, in the nest. So whilst I do want to give them a decent amount of nesting material, it is winter after all, um, it's not that cold in the rat room because I've got the heater on at the moment, partly to try and kind of fool, fool Mog's um, system into believing it's not as wintry as it is. Um, but I don't want to give them too much because they can overheat as babies, but I'm still going to give them a bit and I like to give a choice. Um, as with anything with rats, choice is valuable. So I know they're going to use mostly the substrate for nesting, but I like to offer a bit of other nesting material as well. So I've got three different types of stuff here. Um, this stuff here is kind of thick papery stuff um, called Safe Bed. You can get this in most pet shops, just in a separate little bag. It's quite nice, it's, it forms quite tangled lumps. Um, it does get smelly fairly quickly, so I tend to change it out like a small handful at a time, but I'll stick that in. And then I've also got, this looks very similar, but it's actually tea bag bedding. It's got a slightly different texture, builds in a slightly different way, very good for soft for lining the nests. Um, I find my mum's quite like using te the textures in different ways, so I'm going to put that in. Um, and I'm also going to stick a handful of hay in. So um, my girls are very much used to having hay around, um, it's great for them. You do have to watch, this stuff is, is nice and soft and low dust, um, so it'll, it'll kind of like help give structure to the nest because it's quite a kind of tough thing. So, got all our substrate, got some nesting material, I'm going to chuck in a little cardboard tube. This is a little bit bigger than your normal toilet roll tubes, which I like because it means the babies aren't going to get stuck in and mum can't get in themselves. Mum can get in these. Um, it's partly because I know it'll probably end up in the nest at some point and partly to give mum something to chew and do. Um, Again, I want to kind of make raising babies not too kind of stressful or boring for my mum. Um, to be fair, for the first week or two, they're not that interested in anything other than the babies. But they've got a few days in the birthing cage before the babies are born and they go a little bit stir crazy. They're not used to a small boring cage, so um, this kind of helps. Right, just building the mesh bit and you'll be able to see the Alaska cage if you've not seen one before. I like this cage because it um, flat packs, but some construction is required. Right, there we go. So this is the top of my cage. And um, it does have clips to hold it in place on the sides. I rarely actually bother with them because it's not like I'm going to lift it up and carry it around. Um, so I just kind of sit it on there. So that's the size of my um, birthing cage. I like Alaska's because they've got a little bit extra height, which means when it comes to baby time, um, I can put a tic-tac in there, which is brilliant, um, once they get old enough to use that. But at this stage, it's just going to be kept fairly plain um, with a few extras. So, um, I like to be able to, like, like I mentioned before, give mums a little bit of breaks away from the cage. So part of that is in the space in the cage. So this half is normally going to end up where the water bottles are, where I feed them, etc. A little bit of space. But I, I find my mums quite like to go on some perches as well. So I typically put a couple of perches in. Um, now, I, I only put perches in um, 
well, I do put a hammock in, but I'll explain that one later. That's not a permanent thing. What you want is nothing that they can sleep on. So you don't want to have your mum sleep well away um, on a perch somewhere and take a baby up with her. Now, if she decides to go and jump on this perch and the baby happens to be latched on, all it will do, the baby will fall down and be able to crawl to the nest. If they had a proper big ledge or a hammock in when they had the babies, um, then they could drag a baby up there, leave it there, and the baby will be trapped and get cold and potentially die. So what we're doing is offering them a fair bit of space. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of these on. Um, they're not kind of big things, but they can chew them as well as just perch on them. And it's something that my mums all do appreciate. Um, I do know some breeders will leave this until the, the mums have had like the litter for about a week or so, not wanting to give them um, too much opportunity to spend time away from their babies. I'd say very much play this by eye, ear, whatever you want to call it, but there isn't a right answer, so pick what works for you and your rats. I'm also going to have a bit of rope. It's not anything they can really put, like balance on much, but they quite like destroying them. And again, it's something to kind of distract them that they can't um, stay on for kind of any length of time. These are also a nice length. <laughs> um, and again, similarly, a bit of a chew tie. And if you notice, I'm keeping this area where I expect the nest to come quite free. Um, everything's basically going in this area, which I know where my mum's not going to make the nests typically. So final thing I'm going to add to the cage for now, this just normal hammock, very square hammock. Um, my girls move into the birthing cage on day 21, um, which is a few days away yet for Mark. But I'm just getting this ready ahead of time because I start back at work tomorrow. Um, but what um, I like to do is I move them on day 21. They're not going to have babies. Um, I've never had day 20 babies, day, day 21 babies, sorry. Um, at the earliest my line have their babies is day 22, where you take day one as the day after mating. Um, more typically it's day 23, sometimes day 24. So I'll move them in on day 21 with a friend. Um, they'll have a hammock for that day just so they can kind of settle in and get the things, the cage smelling familiar. And then when I take the friend out on the morning of day 22, I'll whiz the hammock out as well. So this is literally just to kind of tide them over and make them feel at home. To be honest, they normally just sleep underneath the hammock, um, but I like to give them the option, at least for that first night while they're kind of settling in with what is an unfamiliar cage ultimately. All right, so let's add this. Um, I also, I put it over their um, nesting section. Um, that encourages them to actually nest in that area. So that sets them up and then of course we need a couple of water bottles so I always like to have more than one water bottle in every cage um, this basically means and I'll fill this up later Mark isn't moving in yet but I'm just setting them up um, yeah I like to have more than one water bottle in case anything blocks up with mums particularly I give them quite a lot of supplements so having two is even more handy so I'm gonna stick them both down this end um, that is partly I could put one here which has a water bottle spout but I typically set up my um, webcam on that corner and the water bottles always get in the way. So um, I'll just put them both at this end for now. Water bottle springs, by the way, are a brilliant buy should you ever want to get them. Right, so this is pretty much set up. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do is a bit of cardboard. I use cardboard quite a lot. So um, what I like to do for my mums is I like to give them a little bit more shelter. So I don't use igloos in my cage. That's a personal choice again. Some breeders do, some breeders don't. Igloos are quite handy and they offer a bit of shelter, but I find that they also cramp in the nest and in some cases they can cause overheating. Less of a problem this time of year, um, but it's something that I don't really want. Plus I like to allow my mum to choose how big they want the nest. So it can be, it can be just a little scrape, very open in the air, or it can be a massive mound, but it's entirely up to them. Um, an igloo kind of limits that. But an igloo has the advantage of it keeps the babies in one place. And <laughs> um, so my mums are occasionally prone to throwing them around the cage and when they run out to see me. Um, so I do occasionally have to pop them back. But to be honest, my mums are very good at going around and rounding up the babies after they've strewn them everywhere. Um, it's just one of those things that happens with rats. Um, but it's one to think about. But rather than offering um, either kind of an enclosed cage 
or than offering new glue, I instead offer them a bit of card, <laughs> which just creates a bit more of a cave type feel. Um, I'll probably faff around with this and tape it in place shortly, but I'll give you a bit of an idea. So basically now what we've got is the front and a little bit along the top is kind of there for air. I might play around some other bits of card as well just to make it a little bit more enclosed, but that's it. And I will always keep this front bit clear, um, but I want to give them that little bit of added security that comes when they've got a like a more enclosed thing. One of my friends, um, if you know your IKEA, um, your Stuva set of kind of like bench or tabletop thing fits perfectly over in Alaska. I may one day get one, but I just have to store it the rest of the time. Um, so currently I'm just using bits of cardboard, which works just as well. But my friend has like nice little Stuva set up, set up, which is lovely. Right, so I think we're sorted in there. It's going to be a few days before Mog moves in. Um, but I thought I'd get this sorted now so you can have a bit of a look and think about things. And it's also quite exciting to do anyway. So over and out from me at Sami Rats and um, have a lovely few week or so. I think I'll probably be feeding back before that time, even if it's just to explain what reabsorption is like in rats. But hopefully it will be with some good news. So bye for now.